is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar this morning. We're going to be talking with Anthony Bonaduce from Jet Reports. He's going to be talking about solving our NAV data problems with Jet Reports. I know we're all excited to get started. Just a little bit of housekeeping before we do. First, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them into that question box. I will call them out and get them answered for you. Second, we do record this and all of our webinars. So if you want to watch it again later, have somebody else in your organization watch it. It's going to be up on our website by the end of the day. That is Inovia.com. So Anthony, without further ado, I will hand it right over to you. Awesome. Thank you, Abby. And a big thank you to the folks at Innovia for letting us uh, come out and present today and uh, again, help you solve your nav data problem. Um, I've been in this channel for about four or five years now. And if there's one thing I've seen stay consistent, it's that NAV does not have an answer, you know, built in out of the box for, you know, most folks reporting needs or issues. So, uh, again, here at Jet Reports, we've been around 14 years helping solve this problem. Uh, we've heard the questions over the years, you know, how do I get the information from all my data systems? Everybody has their own version of the same report. You know, how do we ensure data integrity? You know, I don't know data modeling. I've heard all this chatter about Power BI. I want to use that, but I don't know how to model data. Um, today we're going to answer all those questions, we're going to solve all those, those issues, and we're going to show you kind of the uh, latest and greatest from Jet Reports, who again has been, uh, you know, solving these, these issues for many, many years. So again, my name is Anthony Bonaducci, I'm our Director of Sales here at Jet Reports, and let's just go ahead and jump in. So one thing I will not be able to help you with is uh, exactly what's on this picture. Like I said, I've been in the channel for four or five years, I still have no idea what the cloud is. Um, so I can't help you with that, but I can help you get some powerful reports and dashboards. So the first thing I like to do before we jump in is just, I guess, what I call our credentials. So a little bit about us for a couple minutes, and then let's go ahead and jump straight into content around reporting and BI. So as I mentioned, you know, at the bottom, you can see we were founded in 2002 specifically for Dynamics NAV back then. So there's a lot of really tight integration between Jet and NAV, and we'll see some of that today. Uh, we have 10,000 companies across 94 different countries. We have offices in 14 different locations, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, so we're much more than just a U.S. presence. And then that bullet at the top, you know, Jet Reports delivers unparalleled access, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's what marketing wants us to say, right? You know, that's, that's the marketing term for what we do. Um, in reality, if you take anything away from this, you know, we're the people that make it easy to get data out of your ERP. So we make it easy to get those reports. You know, we're a financial reporting company, but we also do so much more. Um, so that's a little bit about us. As I mentioned, we are all over the world. So you can see here offices, you know, uh, clustered there in Europe. Our, our uh, headquarters is here in Portland, Oregon. Um, so again, we are kind of a, a global presence. And, you know, we have happy customers all over the world. So, you know, these are some of the, the bigger names, right? But, you know, what's great about our product is it's completely scalable. So we have customers, you know, like, like Talking Rain, the third largest beverage provider, right? Um, all the way down to, you know, a mom and pop potato farm I worked with the other day that I think has five total employees and like three of them are family, right? So, um, you know, that's the beauty of our tool. We, we, we scale up and down. You know, there's no uh, ideal customer, right? Anyone using Dynamics is an ideal customer for Jet. So today, we're not going to cover Jet Express. Uh, you know, and speaking with, with Abby and the folks at Novia, I know so many of you guys already own the, uh, you know, uh, professional or, or, or above versions of Jet. So we're going to skip over this piece. If you are interested in Express, there's all kinds of uh, videos and, and, and um, information on our website at jetreports.com. And Jet Express is just a basic kind of financial and ad hoc query reporting tool that Microsoft actually asked us to build. So that's the one that kind of bundles out of the box with NAV. Um, very, very basic, but does give you some powerful reports. Um, so we're going to skip over that piece today. Um, one other thing I'd like to point out on these webinars, you know, a lot of folks have, you know, if you've dealt with invoicing or, or documents from NAV, you know, if they're very, very rigid, it's very difficult to customize those. So a lot of people don't know this, but Microsoft also came to us a couple years ago and asked us to build some sort of a um, kind of um, a tool that's going to allow folks to create custom documents inside Word. So things like, you know, credit memos or invoices um, and give you a flexible you know, interface to customize those. So that's also on our website if you're interested in that. 
But today we're really going to drill into, again, answering those questions around how to get data out of NAV and how to get the reports you want. So the first tool we'll look at is Jet Professional, which is just, you know, uh, the tool that made us famous. This is the you know, same tool. Obviously, it's progressed so much since then, but it's the same tool that we launched in 2002 when we were founded. Um, and for some of you who are on here and, and actually already own Jet Reports, you've probably heard this called Jet Essentials. We just recently did a bunch of brand DNA exercises and surveyed tons of our customers and our user base. We found that Jet Professional, that name, kind of fits the folks that actually use this tool better. So it's, it's you know, the business professional, right? Um, and so what this does, this tool, which we're going to look at firsthand, it gives you uh, information from any table and field, any custom tables or fields, absolutely anything you cram into your database. Um, it pulls in the data, you know, via an automated connection into Excel, so you're not copy and pasting, right, wasting time, or as we like to call it, copy and wasting. Um, and then, you know, it cuts the, the, the cost of, you know, programming and hard coding and having to rely on other folks to write reports, you know, to zero, right? You're going to be able to do this as a self-service reporting tool. The other thing we'll look at today, and this should be uh, especially exciting for you folks that already own JET, is the JET web portal. So this is something you may not have seen, but one thing we're really, really good at here and, uh, and, and that the partners are really good at is you know, listening and getting feedback from you guys. And one thing we've heard over the years is folks love being in Excel. You know, we are in Excel by design. It's the most widely used business application on the world. But you know, there are some, some drawbacks, right? Uh, you know, one thing we've heard people say is, you know, I love being in Excel, but I, I get tired of having local copies of reports and spreadsheets all over my computer and all over my folders and all over my shared network drive. And so what people were really asking for is some sort of a report management, you know, publishing platform, some place where they could put all their reports and be able to access them in one place. And so in our latest release of Jet Professional, we also launched the web portal, which we're going to explore today, and that solves those problems as well. So it gives you the ability to have a central report repository with lots of governance, sharing, scheduling, things like that. Um, the other thing that did that's really exciting is it untethered users from the PC, so, or I should say from the desktop. So in, in the past with Jet, you had to have a desktop copy of Excel. You know, you couldn't use Office 365, you know, Excel Online, things like that. Um, you couldn't take stuff on the go unless you had your whole computer. Now with the new web portal, absolutely anything with internet browser access is able to run reports, you know, view your dashboards, you know, things on smartphones, tablets, web browsers. So it's really opened up a whole new world and it's very much, you know, in line with Microsoft. Um, in their vision. So that's kind of what we'll look at. And then I'm not sure if you can see this, just to break it up a little bit, but this is something that I always like to, to you know, we have it posted in our office. I think it's hilarious, but, you know, when we get into Jet Enterprise and Business Intelligence, you can see here it says you need a dashboard application to track your key metrics. That way you'll have more data to ignore when you make your decisions based on company politics. And the, uh, the CEO says, will the data be accurate? And he says, okay, let's pretend that matters. So if you do actually use your data, which you absolutely should, Jet Enterprise is the best tool on the market, um, and that is our full business intelligence and reporting tool. And what's really nice about Enterprise, it builds on everything you've already seen, so all the Jet Professional stuff is included, but you gain a data warehouse, you gain cubes, a bunch of pre-built dashboards, um, all kinds of stuff. And so again, today we're going to explore that as well. Um, I won't read through you know, every bullet here on the slides. I'm, I'm, I'm not someone who does that, but you can kind of see what it does, and, and we'll show that firsthand today. Um, lastly, uh, we'll talk a little bit about business intelligence. I'm going to keep this really high level when we go through it, uh, but basically what we do on our BI model, and we could talk to you about this all day, so if it's something you're interested in, definitely reach out or, or talk to the folks at Inovia. Um, you know, we take your different data sources or we take your nav data, we, we kind of clean it up, put it into a data warehouse, we organize it all together, and then we make it as easy as possible to report on. So if one thing you're looking for is ease of use, fast access to data, things like that, this is your tool. So that's what I want to start with today. I think, you know, we've used, what, about five minutes or so. Let's hop in and, and start looking at some product. So I'm going to go ahead and just exit my PowerPoint here. And I'm just going to open a blank Excel file. So realistically, when we were founded 14 years ago, it was all about financial reporting. 
we were created at the request of a CFO, his name was Bob Adams, and he basically said, hey, I need some fast, easy way to, to, to access information, right? I need my financials easier. And our developer at the time said, well, we can absolutely help with that. But the catch was you had to pry Excel out of his cold, dead hands. And that's, that's a quote. So I think what I want to start out with is showing uh, a nice financial example. And then what we can do is actually jump into kind of more ad hoc database queries. So the first thing I prepared today is a profit and loss example. Now, before we jump in, let's go ahead and introduce the Jet ribbon. So if you haven't seen this before, Jet is an Excel add-in. So as you look up here on my screen, you can see we have our home tab, insert, page layout, formulas, data, you know, all of our normal Excel ribbons. And then over here on the right, we have another ribbon here that's the Jet ribbon. So this is absolutely everything Jet, right? Everything Jet lives and breathes here on this ribbon as far as the Excel component goes. So if you need something to do with Jet, you're inside of your Excel on your desktop here, this is where you want to access it. And we have, you know, different modes here. We have design, you know, the ability to just refresh data. We can publish them out to the web portal, which I'll show you in a bit. We have all kinds of functions to help create reports, all kinds of design tools and shortcuts. Uh, drill down capabilities, scheduling, we have our data source area, so you can see um, today I'm going to do the majority of the demo against the NAB 2015 database, but as I was preparing an example this morning, I realized I didn't have data in some of the accounts I wanted in this new database they gave me. So I'm going to use uh, 2009 to start, and then we'll switch over to 2015. Okay, so let's just go ahead and start with a blank workbook put together a nice P&L I'll show you what a finished product looks like you know one that has a little bit more formatting as opposed to just data um, but I think this will be pretty powerful when you see really what Jet does here so I'm gonna give myself a little space here and I'm just gonna come down somewhere maybe in the middle of the workbook and start typing out what I need to build my profit and loss statement so let's go ahead and put in account filter I'm just gonna lay this out in the way that I like to design it um, this is kind of one of our best practices. If you took JET training, this is a really popular way to build financials. Uh, let's go ahead and do name and amount. All right. And then let's also go ahead and put some filters up here. Maybe we'll start right here. And let's do one for posting. Oops, if I can type today. Posting date. And we'll just do 1, 1, actually let's go ahead and do this. 01, 01, 26. Eh, you know, let's give ourselves a broad range. I'm not sure what the data looks like in here. Uh, and let's do 12, 31, 2016. Okay, so we've got a date range, and I can change that later, but for now, let's make sure we have some data captured. Um, let's go ahead and do one for global dimension one. Um, and the reason I'm just going to type in global dimension one versus the dimensions in here is I'm not sure what you guys are using, but I'll show you how you can interact with, uh, you know, your dimensions within your uh, financials. And then I'm just going to put placeholders for these for now. So we'll use them as a filter, but I'm not actually going to filter on them just yet. All right, so we kind of have the core structure here of what we're going to do. We have our account filters, our key, and I'll explain what that means. We have some filters on our report that we're going to use. And all I'm going to do is start filling this out. So I know in this sample database that our first set of accounts I'm going to want to use here is going to be our 40,000 dot dot 49999. And that's going to be uh, that dot dot there. That's a standard operator from NAV. That's going to give me an account range. So I'm basically looking at 40,000 through 49,999. So we'll go ahead and select that for our account filter. And then what I'm going to do, this is a really kind of cool shortcut to financials or, or to reporting, I should say, with Jet, is I'm going to write what's called a key. And a key is just going to be a snippet of a piece of uh, a formula that I'm going to reuse throughout my report. So instead of having to write it in the number and the name and amount, I'm just going to cell reference my key. So I'm going to open up a standard function here. And what these functions will do is give you data in a number of different ways if you haven't seen that. So for example, the first record that matches the last, you know, give me data in rows or columns or separate sheets on Excel. I'm just going to select rows. That's obviously a really common one, right? We want data going down in rows. And then it's going to ask me for what table I want. And I'm just going to use the drop down. And pretty straightforward, right? I'm going to use the GL account table. And then I'm just going to come straight down to the bottom because really all I'm doing is just writing again, basically a set of filters against a table that I'm going to reuse as I go throughout this. So I'm going to come to the filter section and I'm going to select a number as my first filter. 
And you can probably guess where I'm going here since I'm in Excel, but I could read all the different numbers from my database, but why would I do that when I've already selected my uh, account range I want? So let's just go ahead and grab it right off our worksheet. And then I'm also going to add another filter for account type. And we want to make sure this is set to posting. So we'll just come in here and grab posting and click OK. All right, so this has written out a little key. You can see it put together this you know, kind of long formula string here. And I'm going to be able to reuse that, as I mentioned, as I go throughout my report. So now we're going to come to our number section. And what I'm going to use is a little function here that's going to let me, again, leverage that key to get the majority of what I need and then just tweak it a little bit each time. So let's open this up. And you'll see right here there's a section for a key. So I'm just going to cell reference right off my worksheet. And then I'm going to tell it what field I want to retrieve. Well, in this case, we're trying to get a list of account numbers. So pretty straightforward. We'll go ahead and choose number. And we'll just click OK. All right, so that's the first account that I have data for in my uh, database, so 40, uh, 41,100. And I'm going to just rinse and repeat this process a little bit. So let's open up an NF function here again. And we'll grab a key right off our worksheet. This time we want to get the name, so let's just use our drop down here and grab name. And just so you know, when we're using this drop down, this is reading every single field within my GL account table. So as I mentioned earlier, if you have custom tables or fields, those are all going to show up here as well. Um, but in this case, I'm just using this against base nav. And then down here at the bottom, you have filters. We don't need that because we're using the key, so we'll click OK. So there's the name of our 41,100 account. And then we need a section here for amount, right? We want to actually start pulling in the numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and open up another function. And this time, we'll use our key. We'll go ahead and get the net change. So that's the, uh, the amount we want is the net change. And then we're going to use our filters here that we've actually put on our worksheet so we can toggle between those. So I'm going to use my drop down. And let's just go ahead and do one for posting date. It's our date filter. I'll just grab that right off my worksheet. And I'm just going to lock that in place so as I you know, replicate formulas and things throughout this, uh, we're still pointing to the same row and same column. Let's do one for global dimension one. And I'm just going to grab that right off my worksheet. And so whatever your global dimension would be, you know, if this was a real application of NAV and not just sample data, you know, it would say department or project or whatever it is you guys look at. Um, but for now, like I said, I'm just going to use the, uh, the placeholders here so that we're keeping it universal. And we'll do one for global dimension two and grab that again right off of our worksheet. So I'll click OK. And it is a transactional database, so it's going to store these, you know, these sales as negative numbers. So let's just flip the sign here. So I'm just going to come up to my formula here at the top, and I'm just going to throw a quick negative sign in there. All right. And now, uh, if we come up here and we refresh, we're going to see, and actually let me format this a little bit. So in JET, the first column and the first row in design mode are used for some formatting shortcuts. So if I type the word fit in here, it's going to automatically fit my column width. So you know, we're not cutting stuff, up, uh, stuff off as we refresh here. So we'll make sure that's going to fit. And then I'm also going to be able to type hide if I don't want certain pieces to show up. So I could type hide fit fit so what I really care about is the account number name and the amount right for this P&L and so I'll refresh now and you're gonna notice these columns are gonna disappear right so we can see they're being hidden because we don't need to see the key next to every single one of these and we don't need to see the you know account range we selected we just want to see the accounts uh, the name and the amount so uh, we can see it's pulling in our information here but a few things, it's given us zero, uh, you know, zero balances here, so we don't want that. We actually want to remove those typically if we're looking at a, a P&L, right? We just want the accounts that actually have data. So we're going to do a couple things. We're going to pop back. We'll clean this up a little bit. We'll go ahead and get rid of those zeros um, by using a little filter, and we'll keep trucking with our, our P&L. So I'll go back to design. And now what I'm going to do is just clean this up as I mentioned. So let's go ahead and do a few things. Let's put sales up here at the top. So I'll just type that in. Okay. And then I'm going to use a little trick here, a little shortcut in Excel to just write a formula. And I'm going to say total 
and I'm going to reference my header. So you're, you're going to see a technique here in a bit called chunking. And what that means is I'm literally going to copy these different chunks that I'm building and just paste them down. And I'll change those for my different pieces of my P&L. So by doing things like this, I'm just creating kind of a shortcut so I don't have to manually type everything in every time. So we'll see as I do that, it's going to actually read as total sales. So by writing that little formula there. And then let's get a subtotal here. Subtotal. And I'm going to select the sum. And then I'm just going to select the accounts I want to add together here. And we'll put that in parentheses. So this is just Excel, right? And if you have any questions about this, again, as we're going through it, don't hesitate to ask. So we've got our amount. And let's put these, uh, we'll just clean this up as I mentioned a little bit. Let's put these in the actual accounting format here. Um, let's go ahead and bold some of this information. So maybe we bold this and bold our, uh, our total sales here. And maybe we put a little border on there as well. All right, so we're starting to look better. The other thing I want to do, as I mentioned, is get rid of the amounts that are $0. And so I'm going to do a little piece of conditional formatting. And all that means is if there is a zero, I'm going to make it hide it. If it's not zero, I'm going to have it show the amount. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to type in a little shortcut and just type in hide plus question mark. So that's a shortcut to say let's conditionally format this. And we'll come down. And so now what I'm going to do is just write a little formula, like I said, an if statement, which is just Excel, um, to actually allow us to do this filtering. So I'm going to put an equal sign. I'm going to type if. And then I'm just going to write my if statement. So if this amount equals zero, we're going to hide it. If it doesn't, we're going to show it. OK, so again, that's just a standard if statement in Excel. And we'll see when I hit Enter, it's saying, OK, this is a zero, so it's going to show me that it's uh, the option to hide here. So that's what we have. And now what I'll do if I go and I refresh my report, we'll see very easily that we have number, name, and amount, and we only have amounts that are non-zero uh, balance. So I'll pop back, and we're going to keep cruising through this. But believe it or not, the majority of what we have is actually done. So I'll come back here. And I'm going to just hide these as well. So let's go ahead and hide. Uh, well, actually, I think for now, let me see what that looked like. Yeah, it's pretty clean. We could do, if we want to hide that, we could. But I think that looks pretty good. So we'll pop back. All right. And so what I'm going to do, as I mentioned, believe it or not, I'm basically done with this financial statement. So I can come through here, and I'm going to copy this entire section. This is called chunking. And this is a technique that if you take training with us and you want to learn more about financials, um, our report analysts are 99% of the time probably going to teach in this fashion. So if I select this and I right click and just copy it, or I could use Control C, I'm going to just come down, maybe leave myself a little space, and paste the entire chunk. Now, here's where it gets really, really cool. So we've copied the entire thing. And if we run it, we're going to get the same accounts, and we're going to get our, you know, our sales again. But I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to change this to cost of goods sold. And watch what will happen down here. Awesome. So since we pointed to that and wrote that little formula here, it knows to pull in the word total, leave a space, and then read whatever is up here. All right, so we have our cost of goods sold. And this time, we want to flip the sign back, right, because we do want our expenses to, uh, to be negative. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do some calculations around this. I'm also going to change my accounts because we don't want the same accounts. I know that my costs of goods sold here are going to live in that 50000 to, uh, I think they're 5999 in this. Okay. All right, so we can see we have our costs now. And now what we want to do is you know, start doing our calculations here within our financial statement. So let's go ahead and do gross profit. And I'm just going to write a simple formula. We're going to take our sales. We're going to subtract our cost of goods sold. There is our gross profit. And we'll clean this up. Let's maybe bold this. Maybe we make it a little bit bigger here to give us a break in our statement. Uh, we could put a line above it. OK. And now if we go to Jet and we refresh our data, OK, we can see we have our sales section here. We have our costs of goods sold. And we have our gross profit. But we're not quite done yet, so let's go back to design. And what I'm going to do 
you probably can guess at this point is I'm just going to copy all of this again. I'm going to come below my uh, gross profit here, give ourselves a little space, and I'm going to paste it down. Now this time we'll go ahead and change it around as well. So we're going to change our title. We're going to call this uh, administrative, if I can type, uh, and other. All right, so there's our total administrative and other. We're going to change our accounts. Since we've referenced this throughout all of our formulas, it'll update based on that. And we'll come over here and just change this to uh, the very end of our accounts. All right. And now we just need to kind of do our final calculation here. So we'll do net profit. Same idea. We'll just take our gross profit. We'll subtract the remaining uh, administrative and other expenses here. And we'll bold this. Increase the size a little bit. Maybe we put uh, you know, some different borders around it. But at this point, I'm actually done with my profit and loss. So all I did was write out this little chunk. I just copy and pasted it, did a couple calculations in between. And if I go to my Jet Ribbon and I refresh my report, look at that. We have sales. We have our costs of goods sold. We have our administrative and other. And we're left down here at the bottom with our net profit. So that's a really good example of how Jet makes financials easy. Um, and believe me, this is a, you know, you're talking to a sales guy right now. Um, I learned how to do this the other day in about 10 or 15 minutes from one of our trainers. So this is, you know, again, uh, I've had folks say, well, you make it look really easy. You know, if you have one of the products and you take training, it really is this easy, right? Um, and you can imagine you can spin this off into tons of different variations. So that's a great example. And now we have our report. So what we want to do from here is really up to the user. So I can save this and send it off to people as a local copy. Um, I could come to design. I could publish it up to my web portal. But I think what I want to do is switch and show you kind of what more of a finished product actually looks like. So I've pulled up some sample reports here that we'll look at today. Um, and I'm going to just open up one of them to give you a good idea. So here's a profit and loss uh, built off the other set of data here for NAB 2015. Let's just use that instead. So here's a profit and loss by company. This is a consolidated profit and loss, but you can see it's the same idea, right? You know, we have our revenues, our costs, our total expenses, and we're left with our, our total P&L here at the bottom. All we've done here is clean this up a little bit more. You know, we added a logo, we put some titles at the top, right? And this is one of our sample reports. So if you, if you weren't aware, on our website, we have 40 or 50 canned reports that we give you that are built off NAV. So this is one that comes out of the box with Jet. And you can see this is, again, what kind of more of a finished product would look like. So we have our different companies here at the bottom. We've broken it out further by Global Dimension 1, which in this case is Business Group. And we have that for our North America company and our UK company. And so the idea is when you look at something like I just built and then you format it and clean it up, this is your JET report. And the beauty of this, unlike copy and pasting, is this gets to be used infinitely, right? As much as you want to use it, this is available. So if I wanted to update this report, I could go to my Jet Ribbon and I could hit refresh. And it will pull up those filters that we decided on. And I can toggle between any of them. So maybe I just want to get to a single P&L for North America. Well, I can click on my company filter here. And we'll give that a second to pull up. Select North America. Click OK. And I can run my report. And you're going to see it's going to go to NAV, query it, and update my report dynamically. So instead of having a consolidated P&L, we just have our North America numbers. We have it still broken down by Global Dimension 1. But that really is the fundamental idea with Jet Reports. You're writing a report once, you're formatting it, getting it looking how you want, and then just using it, you know, refreshing indefinitely and changing those filter parameters. Now, I mentioned earlier one thing that people really love about Jet and is the integration, right, the seamless kind of integration between Jet and Nav. And so I think a piece that really speaks to that is the ability to drill down on these numbers. So if you're looking at this you know, North America company and you're looking at sales retail for North America, um, you'll notice when I click on that data, a little arrow pops up. And there's also one up here at the top on the Jet Ribbon. And so if I give this a second here, I think this is the first time I've logged into NAV today, but if I give this a second, what it's going to do is it's going to open up an instance of NAV it's going to log me in based on my, my Active Directory credentials. And then it's going to show me the detail behind that number. So we can see here it's opening up NAV 2015. And we'll give it just a sec here. 
And here's all the transactions that make up that number, right? Because sales over a given time period, typically it's not just one sale. You know, hopefully not. That's a lot of a lot of uh, um, reliance on one one invoice, right? But uh, you can see here, like that number is made up of tons of different invoices. And so if it looks inaccurate or skewed, or if you just want more visibility into the data, that's certainly available, right? And you can easily get back and forth between Nav. And if I close out of here. I'm logged into my you know my home page here so I can do anything I normally would. Otherwise, if I close out, I'm right back in Jet. So the other nice part, right, that people really like, so I just want to touch on it before we keep moving, is the ability to schedule reports. So you can actually schedule reports, you know, automate the running and distribution, and it's really straightforward. So if I wanted this PL to go out, you know, every Monday morning, right, so I can come in and see you know our numbers and what they look like. I can click schedule and all it's going to do is have me create a new task and a task is just a report that's set to run and distribute so I can say new task I could call this my you know profit and loss I could schedule how frequently so using that example maybe we want it weekly or something like that I can choose a start date and time so maybe I want Monday at 7:45 a.m. something like that so it has a couple minutes to run and be waiting in my inbox when I get in I can choose email recipients, so I can click send email, and I can put my uh, you know my finance team email, or I can put individual folks on the finance team, and then lastly I can choose my output. So do I want a Jet workbook like you see in the background? Do I want uh, you know static Excel file with values only? Do I want a PDF? Um, and you can also point these to like a shared network drive so that they you know load after they're ran and just are sitting there waiting to be pulled down. Um, and so I can click schedule. And that would have all my different reports that are set to run and distribute. So as I mentioned, one of the really cool things is the ability to um, you know, publish reports up to the new web portal. So instead of having you know, reports on your network drives or you know, having reports sitting locally, um, you can actually come up here in design mode. And you'll see there's a publish button that lights up. So I could say, let's go ahead and publish this report. And I'm going to go ahead and you know give it a name or a description if I want, and we'll just go ahead and overwrite it. I think I already have this published up here. Let me see. Um, let's try this. So I'm going to publish that, and it's going to prepare it to send it up to your web portal. And again, we don't host anything, uh, so this would be a, a site that you guys have spun up that you can access. And so if I come into my web browser now, you'll see it's going to ask for my domain, my username, and my password. So we'll throw those in. And if I log in, oops, I just logged in there. Let me do this. Uh, if I use the web portal, I'll give that just a second. All right, let's go SW Pros. Let's see if it likes me a little bit better this time here with the right information. There we go. Okay, so I'm in the Jet web portal, right? And so this is the new latest and greatest from Jet. Everything's laid out. We can see this consolidated PL I just published up here is sitting there. And so I have my reports section. I have a scheduler. This piece is in beta right now. So there is going to be separate scheduling from the web portal if you want that. But uh, that will be released very soon. And then we have a dashboard section as well. And so what you're seeing here on the screen is kind of your, your library, right, your report library. And so we can see I have different data sources that I've used. We can see the status of reports, right? So these have all been ran, but that p and I just published up has never been ran because we just put it up moments ago. Um, we can see when it was last run, the duration, you know, who published it, and when it was last published. And so it gives you a nice high-level overview. On any of these reports, I can click on them, and I can see... Uh, you know, uh, a few different things. I have the ability to run a report here directly in the web portal. So if you're using Jet currently or if, you've, yeah, if you haven't seen this before, this means you don't even need Excel on your local machine. This is completely different plumbing um, that we've built. It's a separate application. So you can actually run this report, you know, on a machine that doesn't have Jet and you could open it, you know, via Excel online, like I said, via uh, Office 365 or something like that. Um, so we can see that we can run it, we can download a copy locally, so if you still like having local copies, no problem, you can pull them down directly from here. If you're the owner of the report, you can delete or edit the report, and we can open it, as I mentioned, within Office 365 via OneDrive or OneDrive for Business. And then we also have a details section. So I know this is a lot, I, I should mention this, so for, if you have questions, fire away, but uh, we also have a details section. And if I click on the details, what it's going to do 
is give me that same summary here just in kind of a condensed format. It's going to give me some sharing capabilities, so kind of another level of security, right? If you want to share this report with individual people or groups or share it with everyone, you can do that. Um, it shows run history, so this is really, really nice, right? Um, you know, maybe you ran financials right before month end and everything looked great, and then you came in Monday morning, you know, after the month had closed, and all of a sudden your numbers were all out of whack, and it's like, well, shoot, we, everything looked so great right before I left for the weekend, um, you know, in the past, you'd kind of have to start running your reports and guess, you know, when did I run that again? Well, with, with this new web portal, I can see, oh, I ran that at, you know, this time on Friday. Let me just open that exact uh, copy or let me download that copy. It also has version control. So this is a, a really key piece as well of the web portal. You know, humans are humans. We make mistakes. And so maybe someone who owned a report, you know, opened it up and decided, you know what, I kind of want to look at this differently. And they played around with it, you know, during the day for a couple minutes. And then they accidentally hit save. And it's like, uh-oh, I just overwrote my good copy. That's not a problem anymore, right? So you can just come in here and say, whoops, I, you know, I screwed up my report. But good thing is I can just, re you know, revert back to that version I used yesterday or this morning or last time I ran it. So that's really nice as well. And then as I mentioned, I'll, I'll just give you a sneak peek at this since this is in uh, you know, beta currently, but we do have a JET scheduler here. And if you want to set that up, it's the same thing you just saw within Excel, basically. I can click New Task, choose a report. I can schedule my frequency, you know, choose a start date and time, you know, how frequent I want it to run. Um, and then I just set up my credentials to make sure I have uh, access to it and run the report. So I do want to demonstrate this really quick on how this works. And so let's just use like this top customer sales analysis, look at more of a, a non-financial report. And so if I run this report here, what we're going to see is it's going to start running. It's going to, or I should say, it's going to bring up my filters first, right? And so maybe instead of my top five customers, I want to see my top 10. And then I'm going to hit run. And it's going to start running the report. So you can see it, you know, with the arrows here, it says it's running. And it'll take a couple seconds here. So it took about five seconds here in the web portal and it's completed. Um, we can see it updated this, the, uh, the uh, uh, last time it was ran. And if I click on this, I have the option again to download a copy or open it here within the web via OneDrive. So we'll let this uh, log in, so Excel Online. And we'll give this a second here. And it's going to actually bring up, again, Excel Online here, as you can see, and show me my report in the web browser. So I could look at this, again, smartphones, tablets, anything with web browser access. So there's my top 10 customer report. So really, really slick stuff. People are really excited about this. We did a, a release webinar uh, for our existing customers, and actually for, for everyone, but it was mostly existing customers. And there was well over three, 400 people on that webinar. So if you haven't seen the web portal, definitely uh, reach out and give you more information. So I think for time's sake, since we got a little bit more I want to get through, I'm going to go ahead and stop on the reporting side. And let's switch gears and look at Jet Enterprise. And enterprise, as I mentioned, is the full business intelligence tool. So what I'm going to do is show you kind of how you interface with that versus the uh, the real-time reporting that we saw moments ago. And so I'm just going to close out of these examples here, just so I don't have so many different worksheets open. All right. And what I want to show you is how you can use enterprise to really take your reporting and your business intelligence to the next level. So with Jet Enterprise, let me give you a quick rundown on this. I've got a little presentation just to give you an idea of kind of what we're doing here. So with Jet Enterprise, if you haven't heard of BI, if you haven't worked with BI, it's very different from reporting. Um, still incredibly easy, actually much easier to use, but it, it does a lot more, right? It provides a lot more value for your organization. So basically with BI, I talked about this a little bit earlier on, on one of our slides, but what we're doing is we're taking your NAV data, right? And we're only taking the information that's relevant to your company. And we're taking that and putting it into a data warehouse. And a data warehouse is just a place to store data. You can think of it as a, uh, a few tables and fields, right? That, that instead of having you know hundreds of tables, thousands of fields like NAV does, maybe your data warehouse has five or 10 tables and maybe 100 fields, right? So we greatly trim down the data that you guys want. Because the reality is of these you know, thousands of tables and fields, the average report writer only needs 10 or 15 tables, maybe 100 fields to get all the information they want. So we pull this raw data in, we begin to optimize it by bringing it into a data warehouse. 
we organize it all together. So, um, you know, subject is kind of how we typically group everything. So what you'll have in your data warehouse is a sales section, a finance section, an inventory section, you know, an accounts payable, accounts receivable, et cetera. And the beauty of that is if you ask people, you know, with a reporting tool what the biggest drawback is, it's typically that they need to understand the underlying data structure. They have to know how data relates, how to link tables and fields. And with Jet Enterprise and with the data warehouse, it cuts that completely out of the picture. We do all that in the background so that your users, they don't have to know if sales comes from five different tables. They can just query that one section of the data warehouse where all their sales information lives. So once everything's cleaned up, right, and we can bring in other data sources here. I mean, that's what a data warehouse does really well. So once we brought in your NAV and your CRM or your, you know, historical SQL data, you know, whatever it may be, um, and organize it all together, we funnel it into a set of cubes. And if you haven't worked with cubes, you're about to see them firsthand. There is not an easier way to access data. Uh, it pre-calculates everything. It lays it out in a flat file format. If you want to see some long string of data, um, maybe sales by item, by region, by year, you know, something like that, it's just sitting there in the cubes waiting to be viewed. So very, very easy to access, very fast. It's all pre-calculated. Um, and, you know, again, this could be pulling from just your nav data. It could be pulling from 30 data sources. The user experience here wouldn't change at all. So really, really powerful stuff. Um, the nice part for all you folks on here that are using Dynamics Nav is that we've been doing this for a really long time, and what we realized quickly, and it revolutionized business intelligence, is that 80% of what you know one company on this call wants to see using Nav is the exact same as everybody else. You know, Nav is a base ERP. The majority of what we want to report on is just base Nav tables, and so we we started asking ourselves, you know, why are we uh, you know why are we building everybody's project from scratch? You know, traditionally, that's how BI was done. It was expensive. It was time-consuming. There was risk involved, right? You know, is the project going to fail? Is it going to is it going to work? All of that is now a thing of the past with Jet. So with Enterprise, we give you a pre-built project for Nav. So you're going to get 80 to 85 percent of what you need out of the box with Jet Enterprise. So we give you uh, a pre-built data warehouse. We give you seven pre-built cubes. You can see them right here on my screen. We give you a finance cube, purchasing, inventory, AP, AR, sales, and manufacturing. And those install in two hours. So you heard that correct. In two hours, you're going to have 80 to 85% of a BI project up and running in your environment. Um, that remaining 15 or 20%, we add in with our back-end tool. Uh, it's the best back-end tool on the market and it lets us customize five times faster. So to put that in context, our average NAV business intelligence implementation is installed in about two hours and typically takes about 20 to 30 hours of consulting to completely finish. So very, very impressive. Uh, I challenge you to find someone with, you know, with, with faster ROI or that can get you set up and running quicker. Um, you know, I just don't think you'll find anything like that. So really, really cool stuff. So that is, BI in a very high level, right? We've, we've, we've consolidated information, we've made it faster, we've made it easier to access, but let's see what this looks like firsthand. So I'm gonna close out of here, and I'm gonna just use one of our sample cubes to put together a, a pretty powerful report very quickly. So if I walked into your office and I said, hey, you know, I need a report that shows, you know, sales, it also shows the costs associated, you know, I wanna see the profit and the profit percent, and I want to see that over time, but here's the catch. I want to see that also by our different item categories and also our individual items. Oh, and I also want to see it by different salespeople in different locations and by different years. I think a lot of folks here, typically when I tell that story, I get kind of the, the white face staring back at me, you know, the deer in the headlights, right? Because that sounds like an incredibly complex report. With Jet Enterprise, it's not, right? Using the cubes, it's not. So there's lots of ways you can leverage the cubes. You can pull from uh, the cubes with different formulas like you saw uh, on the financial statement example earlier. But one really popular way and one way to just get kind of large volumes of data quickly and allow you to analyze and slice and dice is using the pivot tables here. So if I click on the pivot table, 
it's going to pull up a list of information. Let me just point to my, uh, my nav cubes here. Um, and so if I open up a pivot table, you can see right away, here are those pre-built cubes I promised you. So finance, inventory, manufacturing, payables, purchases, receivables, and sales. And if I grab my sales cube here, I'm just going to use sales for the, uh, the, the sample data since it's got good data in it. And over here on the right, this is literally the pre-built sales cube for NAV. And if you haven't worked with a cube before, they're made up of two things. Measures, measures are our numerical values, things like cost, profit, quantity, sales amount, and dimensions. And dimensions are the pieces that give those numbers relevance or context. So information like you know, our bill to customer information, or our company information, or global dimensions, or item information, or locations, or posting dates, salespeople, sell to customer, right? So you heard right, this is the pre-built cube. You get all of this out of the box in two hours, right? So incredibly powerful stuff here. And so if I come up here, um, and I wanna build that report, I remember the first thing I was asked to do is bring in sales and cost and profit and profit percent. And you know, I would love to have 83 million in profit, but that doesn't mean anything until we put some, some context around it. So you know, I was also asked to, uh, to look at this by item category, but also by individual items. Well, the good thing about cubes is they have hierarchies. So I can go ahead and select item category by product group, and now I have item category, I have product group, and I have individual items all at my disposal. I just have to expand it out. So that is that is now solved part of that uh, you know question when I was asked to build this report. I can get all the way from item category to individual items. You know something you can't just do with reporting. You have to have a data warehouse. You have to have cubes. Um, and then I also wanted to see it over time. That was another request. So let's bring in our posting date, which we also have a hierarchy for. So I could bring in year, quarter, month, day, and now I can expand out to quarters or years or months, whatever I want to get to. And if you haven't worked with pivot tables, they're flexible, right? If I want to see my date in rows, let's put our date in rows. If I want to see items by year, there's items by year, right? So really easy to toggle back and forth, but I'll just leave it as is. And then I also had a request here to be able to look at this by different salespeople and locations um, and, and by different years. It's just a few more kind of quick uh, you know, check marks or right clicks over here on the right. So let's right click on year, add that as a slicer. Let's right click on location, add it as a slicer. And let's right click down here on salesperson and add it as a slicer. So you can see I can now actually click on these slicers and the data is going to do just that. It's going to slice and dice my report and show me the information I want to see. So normally if I wasn't a little bit more crunched on time, I'd bump this down and put my slicers up around the top and then I can you know, slice and dice and expand out. But um, you know, I'll come in here and just do one other thing. I'll take off my grid lines, maybe insert a quick visual. But that is Jet Enterprise. I mean, that is working off of a cube. That's how easy it is to really access your data and how powerful this stuff is. So um, that's kind of a nice example of a report. You know, one thing people love about business intelligence is dashboarding, so don't think I'm going to leave that out here. We'll cover that in the next five minutes or so. Um, and so you can take Enterprise a step further, right? You can build out a number of different individual reports, and you can consolidate them onto more of a dashboard page. So here's a sales dashboard we've put together. And you can see we have you know, our visual KPIs here, key performance indicators. So we have sales, profit, and profit percent over time. We have uh, sales and profit by item category, sales by salesperson, sales by global dimension one. And as you can see, I spent a little more time here, so I bumped down some of these uh, you know, uh, visuals and put the slicers at the top. But we don't just want visuals. I mean, that's great to spot trends. We also want the data. And so that's what's really nice about this. A lot of data visualization tools don't give you the data. They just give you the pretty you know, gauges and the pretty charts and the you know, globe that zooms in on your customer clusters and things like that. So I can see on each of these different worksheets, here's those visuals and here's the data that makes up those visuals. And like we talked about earlier, I'm not just limited to what I see here. That's what the cubes give me in the data warehouse. So if I wanna go from 2016 Q2 to the daily entries in April, I don't have to refresh, I don't have to rewrite my report, it's all right here at my fingertips. So there's all the information, and I can collapse this back up quickly and easily and get back to where we started.
Another nice piece, uh, kind of the seamless integration, is drill down with Enterprise. I don't even have to go into nav. I can double click on any number I want, and it's going to open up a new sheet and show all of the transactional detail behind that number. So I can see absolutely everything. And if you don't want to see everything, you can just organize it and use the headers you want and take off the others. So easy to, to get back and forth between what you want to see. And if we go back right where we left off. So this, as I mentioned, lets you spot trends. The big thing with dashboarding is slicing and dicing. So if sales are down on the West Coast, I can say, you know, show me North America, show me the, uh, you know, four West U.S. salespeople we employ, and let's see here, you know, oh, that's not good. Looks like Annette is almost about 45% of our sales. The other three salespeople are about 55%. So, you know, you can ask questions. Well, this is all time, so let me get a little bit, you know, drill into a more recent year, for example, and you can see oh, it's actually getting worse. So. That's what, you know, that's what a BI tool gives you that reporting just can't. So I want to switch gears here and show you something that is all the rage right now in the dynamic space, and that is Power BI. If I was here in person and, and presenting in front of you folks, I, I always ask a few questions about this, but since I uh, can't see any hands, that doesn't help. But the questions I normally ask are, you know, how many of you have heard of Power BI? And the entire room raises their hand. And I say, okay, how many of you have installed Power BI? And it goes down to maybe a third or half the room. And then I say, how many of you have got meaningful data or meaningful reports or dashboards out of Power BI? And typically, almost every single hand goes down. Now, I don't want to paint a bad picture. We love Power BI, and we use it every day internally. Uh, we, I often joke with folks, you know, why are you using Microsoft's product and not ours? Well, believe it or not, we're using both. So if you haven't heard, um, Power BI doesn't have a back end. Right? It doesn't have a data warehouse. It doesn't have cubes. It has very limited content packs, which are just a few tables where they've pulled fields from. And if you want anything outside of those, it's a huge development bill. It's a ton of work, um, and it's not. It's it's very rigid. Right? If you if you decide to change the direction of your business, all of it breaks. So what people recommend, what the partners have been recommending, what the channel's talking about, is Power BI with a backend. Well, you might remember earlier I mentioned you're, you're currently looking at the best back end on the market. And so I'm going to show you how Jet can actually make Power BI better. And that's really, really, really powerful stuff. So if I come here to my start menu, I'm going to go ahead and look for Power BI. And I have the desktop version right here. And if you've ever opened up Power BI, again, I challenge you to do this. We, we really love this product, but you know, go install it. It's free. Uh, there, I should say there's a free version. And try and pull from your nav data. And, and, and you know, reach out to me. Let me know how far you get. Um, because I can promise you, you're not going to get very far. You need a strong back end. And, and that's what we provide here. So if I go to get data here, it's going to give me the ability to connect to my database directly. And if I do that, let's just, let's just try it out. And I just go ahead and say local host. We'll pop in here. And I've got you know, my, my NAV 2015. I think it's this guy right here. Uh, and you can see I now have access to every single table within my database. Um, if you want to try and build BI off a bunch of tables, like I said, more power to you. But you can see, I mean, that's what you're going to have to sift through to find what you want. And I barely even moved this bar here, right? So, I mean, that's connecting directly to your database. Um, I don't want to do that. So I'm going to cancel out. And I'm going to select Get Data. And I'm just going to come up here and say, instead of going directly to the database, let's go ahead and go to our, our, our data warehouse or our cubes. And let's connect. And I have these locally on my machine. Now, this looks a lot better already to me, a lot less. But let's go ahead and say, let's use our uh, 2015 here. And I'll just grab my sales information, click OK. And look at that. That's the exact same cube you just saw within Excel that I built the powerful report and dashboard off of with Enterprise. Now you're going to get to see Power BI really thrive. So I can come in here and I can say, you know what, I want to see sales amount, and I want to see that by, um, I don't know, salesperson or something like that. All right, so there's sales by salesperson. And you know what else I want to see? I want to see, uh, let's go ahead and see profit. And let's see that by, um, I don't know, maybe like something like item category. All right, so there's profit by item category. And I can set that wherever I want. 
And you know, one other thing people really like is I want to I want to use the globe. So I want to see uh, let's go sales amount, and let's do that by location. And let's go ahead and select. Uh, we'll put this guy right in here, and I'm just going to drag this to. Uh, let's try this here. Actually, let's let's go ahead and use our globe, and we'll drag location up here. All right, so I can blow this up. So there's my different cl uh, customers here, or I should say clusters of sales here. So I can click on these and it'll zoom in and it'll filter the data and show me what makes up, right? So that's Power BI. That's what people talk about when they say, um, you know, when, when they talk about how easy and awesome Power BI is. It is incredible and it's so easy to use if you have data set up in the background. So that's a really good example kind of of how Jet makes Power BI better. If you have questions on this, absolutely don't hesitate to reach out. Um, but we've got about five minutes, so I want to pass it back over to you, Abby, so we can handle any questions that may have come up throughout. Absolutely, Anthony. We do have a few questions here. Um, our first question, can JET work with multiple data sources or data sources outside of NAV? Yep, great question. So absolutely. Um, like I said, we were created for NAV back in 2002, and since then, obviously, we've ballooned into pretty much everything out there. So if you have multiple data sources, um, we can absolutely pull from those. What I would tell you is that the enterprise piece is built for that, right? A data warehouse is built for multiple data sources, so that's the route I would lean if I had multiple data sources. Um, and what's great is we can bring in your CRM and your NAV and any other systems you want, right, and organize that all together. Okay, great. Our next question, um, what about my custom tables and fields? Can it pull from those as well? Yep, absolutely. So the uh, literally with JET, anything you cram into your NAV database, we can read, or anything you cram into any database, I should say. Um, we often joke with folks that as long as the data lives somewhere, we can get to it. Okay, and our final question, how long does it take to get up and running after a purchase is made? Great question. So with the Jet Professional piece, the uh, real-time reporting component, uh, it's just a quick install. So that's going to bolt in your Jet ribbon here to your uh, Excel. Typically about five or ten minutes, you're ready to start creating reports. Um, obviously, you do want to have the, the training side of it, right? So that'll, that'll uh, draw it out a little bit. But as far as the actual software itself, just a quick download. Um, as far as enterprise goes, it's typically going to be about two hours for the pre-built stuff. And then, as I mentioned really briefly, um, so I'm glad you asked that question, uh, uh, is uh, maybe 20 to 30 hours of consulting time. So typically, you know, same month, we have you completely up and running on your BI project. Okay, great. Well, Anthony, that's the end of our questions. So I just have to thank you so much for your presentation today. I know it was extremely helpful for a lot of our customers. Um, I also do want to remind everybody that we did record this session, so if you want to watch it again or you want somebody else in your organization to watch it, it's going to be up by the end of the day on our website, which is Innovia.com, and we just want to thank everybody for attending. So thanks so much, and we'll see you on our next webinar. Thanks, Abby. Talk to you soon.